Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGU Source Measure Units. This presentation explains how to configure and use the different features of the NGU Source Measure Unit. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of source measure units and two versus four quadrant operation. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a refresher, you may want to watch the presentation Understanding Source Measure Units before beginning this presentation. The NGU is a source measure unit with a maximum power output of 60 watts. The NGU-201 supports two-quadrant operation, and the NGU-401 supports four-quadrant operation. Both models can deliver 20 volts and 3 or 8 amps per channel. In addition to advanced protection functions, the NGU also supports many useful features, such as ramp and arbitrary outputs, statistics, logging, digital input and output triggers, and remote sensing. In addition, the NGU can also be operated as an electronic load, or sync, and can be used to simulate batteries. The NGU is normally configured through a touchscreen interface, but remote control via USB, Ethernet, or GPIB is also possible. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll show you how to configure and use the NGU and its most important features. There are six banana-style connectors on the front of the NGU. The red and blue force high and force low connectors are used to supply power to the load, and the black sense high and sense low connectors are used for remote sense, something we'll cover later in this presentation. A second force low connection can be jumper to the green ground terminal to create a better ground connection. This is important when measuring very small voltages and currents. Voltage and sense connections can also be made on the rear of the NGU using a terminal block which contains sockets for both voltage and for sense wires. Note that both front and rear voltage connectors should not be used at the same time. To enter voltage and current, start by pressing the home button. The values for voltage and the current limits can be entered using either the touch screen or the rotary knob. Confirm values with either the check mark key or by pressing the knob. To enable output, simply press the output hard key. The output key color indicates the operating mode, something we'll come back to in just a moment. The NGU main screen displays voltage, current, and power, as well as statistical information in the form of max, min, and average values on the right. Statistics can be reset and restarted by clicking on the stats counter in the bottom right corner. The NGU displays two sets of values. The configured values, shown in boxes, are those entered by the user. The measured output or readback values are shown above them. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's pause for a moment and explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode, because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if the load resistance, and therefore current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to a current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or a constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGU. We configure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current value of 400 milliamps. The NGU will hold the output voltage steady, or constant at 2 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured current threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage and current are displayed in green. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still remains constant at 2 volts while the output current changes, but only as long as the limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGU automatically switches to constant current mode 
and reduces the output voltage to the point where the output current does not exceed the configured current limit of 300 milliamps. When operating in constant current mode, values of voltage and current are displayed in red. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode, so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on a user configured pattern or sequence. The NGU supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely ramp and arbitrary. Let's take a closer look at both of these. As the name implies, ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in the output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which the voltage remains constant. Ramp settings are configured in the channel menu by pressing the settings key and then choosing channel add ramp. The ramp time must then be entered. Recall that this is the time needed to go from zero volts to the configured output voltage. After enabling ramp, the ramp icon will appear in the channel display. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases voltage from zero to a defined value, arbitrary switches the NGU output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user-defined value and duration, and the sequence can be repeated multiple times. To use arbitrary waveforms, a profile must first be defined. This can be done on the NGU using Settings, Device, Arb Editor. An arbitrary profile consists of a series of points with values for voltage, current, time, and whether or not interpolation is used between points. The plus and minus buttons can be used to add or remove points from the table. Two additional parameters are also required. The first is the repetition count, that is, how many times to repeat the sequence. If the repeat count is finite, the end behavior must be defined. The output can be turned off, or the last value in the sequence can be held. Sequences created with the ARB editor can also be saved or loaded within the NGU. The channel menu is used to select and enable arbitrary waveforms. Simply click on Arbitrary, select a profile to load, and then enable. The arbitrary waveform is run when the output is enabled, and an icon will appear in the channel bar when an arbitrary sequence is being used. The next topic is protection functions. These are used to protect the attached load from excessive voltage, current, or power by disabling the output when a user-defined threshold is crossed. Protection functions are configured by pressing Settings, then Channel and Output. Both overvoltage and overpower protection are activated when a user-defined voltage or power threshold is crossed. As with other forms of protection, the channel is turned off when protection is activated and output has to be manually restarted. Visual indications in the form of blinking icons appear in the channel display when either overvoltage or overpower protection has been enabled. Overcurrent protection, also called an electronic fuse, is activated when the current drawn by the load exceeds a configured threshold. Note that unlike overvoltage and overpower, the current limit is not entered in the protection menu, but is taken from the main voltage and current settings. As before, if protection is enabled, the channel is turned off and must be manually restarted. There are two delay parameters associated with an electronic fuse. Fuse delay time is the time between when the threshold is crossed and when the output is deactivated. Fuse delay at output on is the amount of time the NGU will wait after power on before applying the fuse. This can be used to prevent the fuse from being activated by high inrush currents. If overcurrent protection is activated, a small blinking icon in the channel bar is displayed. Safety limits are another type of protection that limit the configurable range of output voltage and or current. Safety limits prevent the user from being able to configure or enter values outside of a defined range. They don't disable output like the other protection types discussed earlier, but an audible alarm is sounded whenever a user tries to configure a value that's outside of these limits. Safety limits are configured under channel in the form of maximum and minimum values of voltage and current. A related function is current priority mode. By default, the NGU operates in voltage priority mode. The goal of this mode is to stabilize the output voltage as quickly as possible. Output current will show more variation and take longer to stabilize, but will still remain within limits specified by the user. In current priority mode, the objective is stabilizing the current as quickly as possible. 
This mode, therefore, is particularly useful in preventing damage to sensitive loads due to excessive current. In this case, the voltage will show more variation and have a longer settling time, but again will remain within user-specified limits. Current priority mode is enabled in the channel menu, and CPM will be visible in the display when current priority mode is active. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGU, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include output delay, remote sense, digital voltmeter, data logging, electronic load, battery simulation, digital triggers, and remote interfacing or control. Normally, voltage is present at the outputs immediately after output is enabled. However, the NGU also allows you to configure a delay between when the output is enabled and when voltage is present at the output terminals. During this delay, the output key blinks green and delay appears in the channel display. Next, let's talk about remote sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In remote sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using these sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Remote sense is automatically enabled on the NGU when connected sense leads are detected. Sense connections can be made using either the front banana jacks or the rear terminal block of the NGU. The NGU201 also supports a built-in digital voltmeter. This allows voltage to be measured anywhere, not just where the NGU output leads are connected. The DVM lead connections are made using the terminal block on the rear of the NGU. When DVM is activated, the DVM voltage reading is shown in white in the upper portion of the screen. Note that for best performance, sense leads should also be attached. In normal operating mode, the NGU displays the measured or readback values of current, voltage, and power, and these can be logged to a CSV, or comma separated value, file. Logging is configured under Settings Device Logging. The logging interval and duration, or mode, are configurable, and the log data can be stored either on a USB stick or internally. To turn logging on or off, simply use the logging on-off switch. In addition to the standard logging mode, the NGU also supports higher speed logging of voltage and current at rates of up to half a million samples per second. This fast log functionality is configured under channel. Data can be written to USB in the form of a binary file, or it can be remotely retrieved using a skippy based client. In fast log, the sample rate and logging duration are specified by the user. The NGU also includes a built-in utility for converting these binary files to CSV format. There are three channel output modes on the NGU. Most often, the NGU is used as a source, that is, current flows out of the supply and is delivered to a load. However, the NGU output can also be set to sync mode. In sync mode, current flows into the supply and the NGU acts as an electronic load. If the output mode is left as auto, the NGU will act either as a source or as a sync, depending on the voltage present at the terminals. Similar to source mode, in sync mode, the NGU display is green when operating in constant voltage mode, that is, when the current flowing into the NGU is less than the set current. The NGU switches to constant current mode if the incoming current is being limited to a user-defined value. Another way of operating the NGU is in constant resistance mode, which is only available on the NGU-201. In constant resistance mode, the NGU looks like a fixed resistor with a user-specified value. In this mode, the current flowing into the NGU is the external voltage divided by this configured resistance. The NGU can also simulate user-defined batteries, and the simulated battery will either be discharging or charging, depending on the connected load or voltage level. The behavior of the battery is defined using a battery model that describes various battery parameters at different storage levels or states of charge. These models are stored as CSV files, but as we'll see, 
they can be directly created and edited on the NGU as well. One advantage of a simulation over a normal battery is that the state of charge of the simulated battery can be instantaneously changed or set via the GUI. In other words, the NGU can jump to any state of charge without the need to wait for the battery to normally discharge or charge to the desired level. Before we show how to configure battery simulation, let's pause for a moment to talk about the parameters that are used in creating a battery model. The first is the total battery capacity, expressed in amp hours. A 200 milliamp hour battery can provide 200 milliamps for one hour, 100 milliamps for two hours, etc. As mentioned a moment ago, state of charge is the available battery capacity as a percentage. If state of charge is 85%, this means that 15% of the total battery capacity has already been used. In this example, our battery with an 85% state of charge now has only 170 milliamp hours remaining. Open circuit voltage is the voltage between the terminals with no load applied. The terminal voltage, on the other hand, is the voltage between the terminals when the load is connected. This is always less than the open circuit voltage. Like all batteries, the simulated battery has an internal resistance or equivalent series resistance. Note that terminal voltage is a function of both the actual load resistance as well as the battery's internal resistance. To simulate a battery, we specify the necessary parameters using the battery model editor. Specifically, we need to define the open circuit voltage and internal resistance for different states of charge. The NGU will interpolate between these values as necessary. In addition, the initial state of charge and any current limits are also configurable. Battery simulation is then enabled under Channel Battery Simulator by simply selecting a battery model and enabling. The battery simulator display shows the battery parameters. The total battery capacity is given in amp hours and the current state of charge is shown as a percentage and in units of amp hours. Pressing set state of charge allows you to instantaneously change to a different battery level. The user configured open circuit voltage and internal resistance for the current state of charge are shown, as well as the terminal voltage and current, which are a function of the connected device or load. And recall that the battery status will be either discharging or charging, depending on the voltage at the end used terminals. The optional digital input-output connector, located on the rear panel of the NGU, provides a variety of trigger in, out, and event signals on different pins. These signals can be used to notify, control, or interact with other devices. For example, the trigger out voltage can be configured to change if the NGU enters constant current mode. The digital I.O. interface supports a very wide range of functions, so please see the NGU documentation for a complete list of supported input and output actions. Another way that the NGU can interact with other devices is using its remote interfaces. The NGU supports three different methods of remote access, USB, LAN, and GPIB. All of these interfaces support programmatic control, in which standardized Skippy commands can be used to configure the NGU and retrieve results. The LAN connection also enables a remote GUI, FTP access, as well as web browser access for administrative purposes. To learn more about how to create and execute programmatic control of the NGU, please see the documentation for an in-depth programming reference and examples. Let's end with a brief summary. Roding Schwartz NGU source measure units are available in both two and four quadrant models. The NGU is easily configurable via the touch screen and front panel, but can also be remotely controlled. Other useful features we've covered in this presentation include ramp and arbitrary output, different types of protection functions, remote sense, data logging, digital I.O., the ability to function as an electronic load or sync, and battery simulation. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGU Source Measure Units. If you'd like to learn more about the NGU or source measure units in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.